Alright, today guys we're going to be going over PGP. And what is PGP? PGP stands for Pretty Good Privacy. And it is pretty darn good privacy. It is a encryption setup where we can offline encrypt messages. And let me tell you first, what is the key to encrypting messages offline well if your messaging system or your email system gets compromised if you have that additional offline compartmentalized encryption system set up you'll be able to encrypt on top of whatever possible encryption may be in the system so even if the messaging system or the email system is compromised you'll have that additional encryption that is completely controlled offline and does not depend on a centralized server or whatever else so what we're looking at on the screen is I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own set of public and private keys you'll have a public and a private key with the setup we're setting up first off when you take a look at this example here, we see a conversation between Alice and Bob. So this is a message from Bob to Alice. It says, hello, Alice. And Alice's public key is shared with Bob so that he can send a message that only she can read. And therefore, the encryption comes out in a message that is unreadable to other parties. Then on the other side of the messaging, we'll see Alice who has a message that says, Hello Alice. And at this point, the message gets decrypted that was from Bob as we see here, Alice's private key is able to then read the message that originally came from Bob that says, Hello, Alice. This is the entire process the message goes through going from Bob to get to Alice and how the two key system works to protect that message and make it only readable to Alice herself. Her private key is what is used to decrypt or read the message. Now, the public key of Alice is used by Bob to encrypt it. So when you're using these key systems, you're going to share your public key with those you want to communicate with. And on the other hand, you never, ever share your private key. That's what you're going to use to decrypt messages from other people who you've shared your public key with. So I'm going to show you how to generate your own keys. And then we're going to go and we're going to encrypt our very first message. First off, I want to thank everyone who's taken the time to support this channel at www buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. It allowed me to make the current upgrade to the microphone I'm using right now. So I hope it's been able to help increase the quality of my videos. I'm going to continue as I get more viewers to increase quality. So if you want to see more videos, please help me out by sharing this video. The more people I have watching, the more time I'm going to be willing to put into each video. And at the moment, it takes me several hours for each video from cover sheet to editing to recording to chopping it up uploading and sending it out so what we're going to be looking at to create our encryption keys is GNU privacy assistant this is the program I recommend for anyone from beginner to expert it is perfect for beginners because it has a variety of tools that you can use all in the same window so what we're going to do first is we're going to need to generate our first set of keys. We're going to go to new key and at this point we'll need to put in our full name or a full nickname, whatever it is you want to attach to this key. Now you don't need to put your real name, you can put a nickname. So we'll go ahead and put Mr. Test Key. We'll go with that and we're going to put a false email address you don't have to put an actual email address but if you do decide to share your key they will see an email address on the server so you might want to add a real email address if you do plan on posting it publicly so we're gonna go ahead and put a false email test one at key servers dot com so that is that and at this point, it's going to ask if we want to create a backup copy. 
this is something I do recommend. You can also, at this point, insert a USB stick or an SD card, and that way you can keep your backup key on a disk that is separate from your computer in case anything happens to the hardware. So we'll go ahead and create the backup key. We need to create a strong passphrase now. And what I suggest here is come up with an acronym, something that you can remember quite easily. Use upper and lower case letters in this. Add symbols and numbers. Ensure you have all those qualities in your passphrase, and that way you have something that is very strong and also at the same time easy to remember. Now we're going to select the location we want to save our backup key and we're going to go ahead and hit the save button. At this point we need to enter our passphrase. It's made a copy just in case something happens to our original. Hit close. At this point we can now encrypt our very first message. So we'll go ahead to create a new message, say you want to write out a note to yourself, say you want to write down your banking information, say you have your cryptocurrency access keys and your remember hash that you might need for later but you don't want it to be publicly readable or say you're writing a small journal you want to keep all that fully encrypted well you might want to use something like PGP it is especially safe and we're gonna go ahead to the windows then we'll go to clipboard now we have a nice little clipboard we can write out whatever it is we want to write we can put out any message any set of passwords any hidden message to ourselves or a journal, or possibly plans for a new program, possibly a business strategy that you don't want anyone else getting their hands on. We'll just go ahead and type out a random message, and I'm going to show you how easy it can be to encrypt that with PGP. Okay, we put in, this is my very first message. Now, since we've created our key, we can go ahead and just simply hit encrypt. And at this point, we just select the key we want to use. We can also sign to verify that and have our identity on there. So we'll go ahead and hit the OK button now. And at this point, it'll encrypt it for us right after we type in that password. Now we have our first encrypted message. Easy as this. At this point, we can copy this message and we can paste it into any messenger that we want to use or any email service we want to send an encrypted message to someone in. We'll go ahead and use this example here. As mentioned, the beauty in using PGP is even if your messaging service becomes compromised at any point, and in fact, you have to be careful about online emails claiming to have this encrypted email set up because you really don't know if at any point when you're using it if the software could change and it tells you it's encrypted but you truly don't know for sure and because of that we have things like PGP that help us bypass any potential messaging service or email compromises and at that point we've compartmentalized the encryption process away from the messaging or email and now we can simply send that message let's pretend we received this message and let's go ahead and decrypt it it's as easy as pasting it back in the clipboard then hitting the decrypt and at that point it'll decrypt it for you you might need to select which key in case you need to remember where you shared your public key. So if you're communicating with a friend or a colleague and you shared a specific key with them, you'll want to make sure you decrypt it with that key so that you can read the message. So remember, let's rehash. The fact is, you take your message, you share your public key, you keep your private key to yourself. By sharing that public key, you're going to allow people to use the public key to encrypt something and send it as a message or an encrypted file. Now when you receive a message from a friend where you have their public key, you can simply decrypt it with your private key if it was issued to you. And you then have the output 
decrypted in plain text. It's as easy as that. That's how we get started with PGP. I hope you like this video. I'm going to go into more detail in future videos. This was a nice little primer to get you started. And part of the reason I did this video was because we're going to be installing Tails and we're going to be using PGP to verify this Tails signing key and also to verify the image itself. The importance of verifying the integrity of things you download, I can't stress enough. If you don't verify the integrity, you could be downloading a backdoor. See my video on man in the middle attacks. You could, on a large scale or a local scale, be experiencing a man in the middle attack at any point. Or if you have accepted a root certificate that is not a very good one, you might be seeing an secure site that isn't really secure and you really don't know what files you're receiving on the internet until you verified it so that's the importance of it and that's part of the reason I'm doing this and I hope it's been helpful to you and if you want to support this kind of work go to www.buymecoffee.com slash politictech you can also read my public blog posts there as well and what I appreciate most is people who take the time to share my videos. I really appreciate that and it also helps this channel grow and helps it in the search rankings as well. The more links that are pasted of my videos, the higher my videos will go in the search rankings. And in the end, the more videos I'll be willing to put out and the more time I'll have to dedicate to them. So thank you so much to my subscribers. I really want to thank you for taking the time to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for sharing my videos and thank you for joining me on this journey. I hit 1.5 thousand subscribers lately and I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who helped make this happen. So thank you so much. I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.